Welcome back to an Act Analysis and Tips for Animators, and today I'm going to take a look at the Netflix show Bridgerton. All right, I got 10 sequences I want to talk about, but before I do, if you're new to this channel, hi, my name is JD, and I do acting analysis tips like these. I do lectures, I do product reviews, I do animation reviews, animation analysis clips, Q&As, all kinds of things. You know the pitch, this is YouTube, so if you like this, you don't want to miss anything, hit that subscribe button and that bell button so you don't miss anything. But that is the end of the pitch. Let's go to the sequences. First up, we have this where she has to tighten this here. And right off the bat, I like this as you have her leaning forward, her leaning forward, and her still here. It's like the added person here versus only one here helping her. Just adds to the whole lineup of people, just like general stagey thing. But that is not why I'm showing you this, but I like this already. As you go forward, you can see that they're tightening, they're tightening, and she goes, no, 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 let me help you, let me help you. And what I want to talk about is this. So look at her eyes. So imagine she's still there, hunched over, getting abused by all of this. And if you look at her eyes, let's play this in full. She's looking there and then she looks up and down and a bit over. And the reason why I'm showing you this is because of eye focus. So because we have established this, she is going to look here. She's going to look potentially here all around. So as she's doing this here, she can still focus. We don't know if there's another actor there. Maybe she's just pantomiming, she's pretending. But when you are animating, you have to imagine that there is another person. You don't have to animate it because the character is not on screen, so why animate the whole thing? But imagine that your character is still looking at the corset, at anything that she's tying together, maybe the head, whatever your animation is, don't forget that your character is not alone. I mean, you don't even have to have this character, but there is other stuff going around in that scene and in her or his world, whoever you're animating. So make sure that the character is not just like this blank. I mean, she's blank here because she's just, I don't want to do this. But as you have another scene, your character might be reacting to cars driving by or something else going by other people. Just make sure that your character is aware of the surroundings, something that I mentioned before, but I'm always going to harp on that. And also in terms of reaction, you can see as she does this, you have this here, <laughs> the shock reaction. So my thing is always, as you have your character, it could be one character, right? This could be your lip sync moment. You can always add another character that reacts to whatever this character is saying. This could be at the end, an end reaction. This could be intercut between the two. So it doesn't always have to be this, because if you have audio, you're always tied to that rhythm, that performance, whatever the character is saying. Having another character in there reacting to this can kind of also mirror what the audience is thinking at that point. And then the audience can kind of go, oh yeah, well this character thinks exactly what I'm thinking, this is insane, and so on and so on. So don't forget, you can always add more characters that are not talking, but just reacting to a lip sync piece. Speaking of looks, this is here as they go out, they're getting ready, go in there. What I'm gonna take a look at is this, right? As she does this, ready, huh, and then that. And that to me is again, eye contact. So. If this is, for instance, the first time where she would be a bit less snobby, she would take this and then look over and make sure that she is right there. She has the time. She can reach it. Something a bit more friendly. But this is the whole, I'm used to this. Ha ha, come on, servant, do this for me. So as your character does something like this, hands over a piece of paper, hands over a book, hands over whatever, is the character going to look at the other person grabbing it or not? Is the character going to give this character time to get there and grab it or not? Is it something where it's kind of snobbish or like I talked about in True Detective where it's a bit more of a habit thing. So we switch over to there. So when you look at this scene from True Detective, just quickly, you can see that he doesn't have to look where the food is coming from, right? So he just grabs it and that's that. But to me, that signals familiarity. They've done this before. This is a process that they have their friends. Compared to this and the way she acts and everything, that kind of that and this situation, it just feels, yeah, that is not as friendly as, you know, as polite as it could be. This one I thought was fun because as they are departing here, they're all in here, you can see this. This is very short, right? If I play this in full, they're in here, they're struggling, and then you have their reaction where they have space and they're kind of bored and they, you know, they're not on the best of terms here. But what I'm going to look at is this. So imagine you have a scene with multiple characters and it could be played either way. It could be a full pantomime thing. It could be a lip sync thing, one or multiple characters. What I like about it is that they are forced to interact with this. It kind of also shows, well, they don't have two characters. They're not that rich. They have to kind of look at or kind of deal with what they have, but it forces them to push 
against each other. Not that they want to, but it's just this, this enclosed thing that makes them not happy. Like, come on, what are you doing here? What is going here? So for me, it's like if you have a scene and you have a lip sync or whatever you have, well, take that scene and put everything you have, all the ideas, and put all those characters into a tight enclosed space so they can't really move. So they can still say the things. It's not that tight that the audio quality will change where you talk like versus you're free with your chest and breathing. But it's something where you might say something, but then every now and then you might move away and look down or do something. I, I like this. I like this idea of take whatever idea you have, whatever scene, but now put all of your characters, even, you know, must be, I guess, multiple ones because they can squish each other, but put them into a tighter space and see what that gives you. Will that, I mean, probably will, change your acting choices in the moments how they look around. So I like that as a, as a twist on an idea, kind of make your, your shot even more different and potentially more original. And as I love contrast, I love that they don't have space, but they do. <laughs> but as a little thing on the side. And actually continuing with the tight spaces, here they are. They're entering and you can see everybody's ready. Everybody's looking. And then as they come in, watch this. Yeah, they're kind of clumsy, don't have really have room. They're all like, ah, oh, it's embarrassing. And then of course, everybody starts talking, starting to react. So this is just as a double down on that idea. What if you have people going somewhere? What if they have to go through tight spaces? What does that mean? Is it something where they will be judged? It will be embarrassing? Is it a class thing? Is it just something funny that you can do or something dramatic? So again, I like sets and that's exactly why. You could have a specific move or motion, whatever it is, but now you add a set to it with that constraint that it's tight, well, that can change how they move. And again, will change potentially the acting choices and make it more original. And staying in here, again, going with a reaction. So as she comes in, there is who reacting. She's all regal, she's all pretty, and they're like, oh, what's going on? It's gone. But then the one acting not so impressed is her. You can see that with the posture, the head and the blink. Uh, it's a slow blink and like, uh, just kind of bored. Compared to as we go forward, with the girl who's all inspired, oh, she's, that's what I want to be at one point. So again, this for me is all about reaction. So if you have something, this could be a move where people are looking and talking. This could be a lip sync. Don't forget that you can add humor. You can add contrast to something where you break away. You can still hear potentially the lip sync that you're supposed to animate to, but now it's all about another character reacting to what she is hearing, what she is seeing, whatever it is, but it can break up the shot and, and can add some humor. But to me, it's also thought process and contrast. It's just really interesting for me to break up a shot in that way. This moment is a bit more subtle. To me, it's all about head accents and timing. So as she goes over, wants to draw attention, she wants to talk to him because she's kind of smitten by that person. Look at, for instance, that head turn, right? Turns around, overshoots a bit, like the whole body goes over, and then, comes back and you can see this right there at the end with the body and the head. And if you look at her, now she wants the attention, right? She's a lot more stiff. She wants to hold, I can't even frame it in there. She wants to hold that gaze. And then you go back into, well, now you're gonna talk. And she realizes, well, he's not paying attention to me again, right? And again, she, the head turns here. Why am I bringing up the head turns? Well, I'll talk about that later. Just again, look at this here. As she is now, wait, why are you talking now? Why are you drawing away the attention? Look at how she follows the head. You can see this. Every time he goes up and down, look at her eyes and her head. She's so focused and fixed on him. Then she realizes, oh wait, well I can do something else to draw attention, to change this conversation. Eyes go down, thinking and then over. And you can see that quick look of, well. And then she says something else. You can see how a little bit of head accents and then that big one here, just for contrast. And she's a bit stiffer here, but on purpose like, well. And then she kind of makes fun of him, kind of. But you know, it's, and then you have this turn here bit of a slower turn, just kind of cuts right at the end. And then at the end you have that little beep, that little thing with the eyebrows. So why am I showing you all of this? You can see his little slow turn here. The main thing besides this cute little eyebrow thing here where she says something and has that little accent of, haha, yep, I said it. It's very subtle, but it's very cool. And the reason I'm showing you this is this. So imagine you have someone where, or you hear something where your character is looking over, but it's kind of like, I don't care. It might just be a Whatever, kind of very loose, where, you, where your head kind of goes, whatever. You can exaggerate big arcs and you can have an overshoot with the body. But imagine now that the character hears something that is very interesting or important, whatever it is, then your character would turn like this. Again, in whatever way, it's however you want to animate. But my point is that the way you end that move is going to be more of an ease in and more of a decided, I'm going to stop now because I am interested in this versus I don't care what is that. It's just a slight difference between an overshoot and then easing into a more fixed ending of a pose and a posture. Again, that can signal 
more interest, less interest. It's very subtle, but I like these little things. I'm a big fan of head accents, including little facial tics here. But again, if any, for me, it's always any movement your character makes. How does your character end the move? How does a character get out of a pose, get into a pose? All of that, the timing, you need like little frames. How do you overshoot or not? Tells us something about the character. Now we're supposed to feel about the character. And I love that stuff. And this was all just episode one. This is an ensemble piece, lots of characters. So I highly recommend you watch the show with a ton to take out. Now that it's crazy in terms of spoilers, but this is mainly episode one. So the next ones are just short little things from other episodes without spoilers. But again, lots to dissect. So watch the show if you're into character stuff and looks and just lots of pantomime and intrigue. And anyway, let's continue. This one is all about posture change. She is smoking, hiding there. And then as she is hearing her brother's voice, she tightens. And it's again, all about contrast, lots of movement. You see the swinging here. And then she hears the voice. She hears her name being called and go, oh! and then she tightens. And then she realizes who it is and like, Oh, uh, you can see this. And this is a subtle thing. I mean, not super subtle, but this is something for you to think about. How is your character's posture? Is it straight? Is it curved? Whatever. At what point can you do a reversal? How can you signify without anything huge in the face, without the help of audio, how can you show a change in the character's headspace? Are they exhausted? Are they, uh, are they annoyed? Are they now subtly concerned? All those things just in the line of action and the body posture. So just don't forget that. It's a simple thing, but I just wanted to point that out quickly here. This one I want to show here just because of the help doing all of this. I like the idea of this character moving around. And she's not that she's, you know, she's very preoccupied. She's usually they're very friendly. It's not that she's rude, but she does her thing and just constantly moves around, not really conscious of her in the back and all of this. She always has to readjust. And I like that she is driving the motion. She's just kind of, ah, I got to constantly follow and do things. And you can see that back and forth. I like how clean poses you have on this frame exactly. But I like that idea that a character is attending to someone and then this character is doing whatever they want and that character has to react. I think this for me is a really interesting contrast in body mechanics, right? So you have the driving force there and that person's kind of like the drag overlap in a way, but they still have their own thing. They still have to react to this. But I like that back and forth. I like that dynamic between those two uh, characters and, and just the idea of that. This one is all about facial dissipation. So as she says, yeah, I guarantee you, that nothing's happening here. And she says it right here. So let's go forward. And she goes, that one. And it's before she says it, before she says it right there, you can see that she already starts to raise the head, eyebrows go up, the mouth already opens. And even if that wasn't enough of an anticipation, then she has this, just that extra squeeze here in all the muscles. And then she says it. And again, don't forget, your lip sync doesn't have to be, well, this is my audio wave, whatever. Here's the mouth shape, here's the mouth shape, blah, 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 blah. Imagine that if someone goes, oh, I like this, right? Someone sees something. Imagine, I don't have it here. I should have it here. I have chocolate here. But imagine I see my favorite chocolate, Rita Sport, hazelnut, milk chocolate, and I go, oh, I like this. I'm not, not going to go, oh, I like this. I see it and I will, I'm going to react, oh. I like this. Or example that I make in other clips, if someone says what, right? If, if you are seeing something that is just stunning you, you might not go, what? Unless it's like a super quick surprise, but it might be, what? So you're forming that, ooh, that W shape much earlier. So for any of students that are watching this, don't forget that your lip sync and all the shapes you're gonna dial in, they're not tied exactly to when the sound is coming out of the character's mouth. You have to think about what are they thinking about? Is this something that's uh, an anticipation because they can't wait and they wanna get those, like arm gestures that I'm doing all the time. So that goes also into the face. You can have quick facial expressions if it's a surprise, but just like with your facial expression not going back to default, you can say something where you go, yeah, whatever. I mean, whatever. And you stay in that shape and you continue to be in that shape on Till you go into the next shape. So not everything has to go back into default and you can anticipate a word by getting into that shape early on. Again, depending on what the character feels, if they're reacting to something, but just as a heads up for any student watching this. And actually staying within that, I love this here. As she goes, well, it was really nice talking to you. And I love this. This is a so exaggerated, but so cute where it kind of, she said it was very interesting and lovely. I can't remember exactly what she says, but it, this is kind of like the, the body equivalent of saying, Oh, I love this. This was really good talking to you. And it's such a cute little thing. Look at that, barely moving their head there. Just a quick little, and then she goes away. Love that little hop at the end, look at that. And then she goes out. There's so much great contrast and just body language and body acting in here is great. So again, another reminder that when your lip sync is done, 
you don't have to stop everything. As I said before, you can have another character reacting to this, but if you are all about just the one character saying and you know, performing a lip sync, you can have little accents, you can have accents at the end. If there's a pause, that's your time to do little takes like that. It's just super cute and I think something to always remember that you're not bound to the audio performance. You have to bring your own creativity in there because it's going to be your creativity and your personality and your sense of drama and comedy that has to shine through your animation so that your, your demo reel or your shot stands out. Speaking of standing out and demo reel, if you have any shots that you want to have stand out more and you want me to help you with this, I have workshops. So if you like this and you feel like that would be cool, I like his ideas and maybe you can help me, you can sign up at any time. Link in the description with all the information, the emails and all that good stuff. Schedule is always open. You can start whenever you want and you can sign up whenever you want. And that is that. Thank you for watching. This is a slightly longer clip. So if you're still watching, as always, thank you for your patience. I Appreciate that you stick with it till the very end. And that is it. If you don't want to miss any of these, feel free to subscribe. That is the pitch at the end. Like and subscribe, you know the deal. If you do subscribe, hit the bell button to get all the notifications because I do upload a lot or I will continue to upload a lot. Schedule's a bit crazy. We have a lot to do at work right now. But that is that. Thank you for watching. I will see you in my next clip.